In today's video I thought we'd take a quick look at this. It is an IBM 6580, it's a display writer system and despite appearances it is not a PC. Um, this was actually a word processor so it was the, um, the missing link if you like between typewriters and the word processors running on computer systems. And uh, this was released back in 1980, cost about uh, $8,000 at the time. That's equivalent to $25,000 in today's money. And uh, it came with a huge keyboard. This is not my machine. I'm looking at it for somebody else. And um, came with a huge keyboard, which I do have here, um, but I don't have the floppy drives for this system, so I can't actually boot it up. Um, we should be able to boot it up to a, uh, a cursor, but um, these were dedicated word processor machines. So uh, what um, they were used for is they would boot to a word processor um, software application that IBM developed specifically for these machines. And um, it was equivalent to uh, Word Today or sort of Word Star back then. And um, they were quite popular. They were a bit expensive, um, but of course with uh, word processors, uh, it gave you a lot of flexibility for saving files, um, correcting errors, that sort of thing. Um, what I want to do is see if we can get this uh, running. So I'm not gonna switch this on. I'm going to take it apart and uh, we'll see what technology they used back in the 1980s uh, for word processing. So before I take it apart, I'll just spin it round so we can see the back. Okay, so we have the lead for the monitor. So that plugs into the monitor port. And then we have various other ports. This, as I say, was normally connected to a floppy drive. If it has a dual floppy drive, two eight inch floppies. And um, it also connected to daisy wheel printers or something similar um, to allow hard copies to be output. And these systems could also be put into bigger systems where the, uh, you can have multiple um, systems all sharing one data source. So you could have um, maybe four or five of these all connected in a common system, uh, all sharing the uh, common disk drive. And um, yeah, they were quite um, successful. They uh, did the job very well and um, it would be interesting to see what's inside. So I'll get the top off, we'll have a look inside and see what's in there. Okay, so these were fairly easy to get apart. Uh, they were designed for easy maintenance and although it looks quite big and bulky, it's surprisingly light for a machine of that era. Normally 1980s um, computer systems were horrendously heavy. This is actually quite light, it only weighs about 15 kilos, which sounds heavy by today's standards, but back then that was uh, real lightweight. So if you're not familiar with these, they come apart very easily. All you need to do is rotate the monitor 90 degrees in either direction. And then it should just lift out. So. As you can see, that comes apart very easily. I'll just move the camera a bit closer so we can see what we're doing. And then the next thing, there should be a screw down this hole. And then we should be able to lift the top off in one piece. Okay, so that's what's inside. This will probably look fairly familiar if you've been watching my videos. Same, same type of technology. So we have these uh, SLA uh, modules, but they had moved at this point more to uh, standard um, DIL packages rather than these, uh, which as uh, I think I mentioned in the previous videos are a bit of a pain to uh, work on because of the lack of information. They still had their own unique um, assembly system here. So we've got the motherboard, which is very similar to the motherboard we saw previously. Same sort of idea. It's the same technology they're using, as I say, but they just move more to um, the dual packages. 
and then they've got this um, frame for mounting the board so just a clamp at either end and you can pull the board out uh, a lot of um, discrete interwiring a bit worrying here we've got a couple of uh, loose wires just uh, flapping about there don't know where they've come from as I say I haven't powered this up but uh, the first thing we'll do is we'll pop the cover off the supply and we'll see what's in there. These are quite beefy supplies because the supply was not just for this unit but also for the floppy drives. And in fact this overall system is, is very similar to the machine we looked at previously. Um, this is just um, separated into discrete parts but other than that it's, it's fairly similar technology, fairly similar type of design. Okay, so we'll get the top cover off this. Okay, I've got all the screws out of this. I'll just disconnect this flying lead. And then we should be able to lift this top cover off. Okay, so a surprisingly modern looking board on the underside of this cover. I think that's just the batch number, no date information. If I look at the devices, okay, it looks like it says 2488, so it looks like this may be a fairly late uh, version, so possibly built in 1988. We'll have a look at some of the date codes as we go through. But uh, looking at the power supply, you can see a very substantial uh, supply. It's kind of typical of this era where it was kind of moving into switching type supplies uh, but still using very big and bulky components so big capacitors um, big switching devices uh, fans and heat sinks and the output from this supply um, wasn't actually all that high uh, we'll look at the specs for it in a, in a future video but it's not a, a, a massive output from this and um, it was way over engineered but uh, very nice to to look at and to investigate and very interesting to look at the technology from um, this era uh, same with the electronics this is uh, an 8086 based um, system so uh, the architecture would be fairly familiar to anyone that's dealt with this type of equipment Um, have a look at these okay so it is like this is a normal type architecture for a switching supply these are 250 volt um, 1000 microfarads so no doubt these um, are the DC side of the switching supply and um, it, it is interesting the way that they organized all the electronics within these and used standardized uh, modules so we've got uh, a module here for the power supply this supply was used in several other machines and then we have um, this arrangement here which was part of the SLA development system that they used but this is moving now more into the uh, towards TTL design that they ultimately switched to um, but this is kind of the um, the interim point where they were moving from uh, this type of uh, solid logic across to the uh, DIL systems. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is just um, tear this apart and give it a clean. And then in the next video, we'll try and power it up and see what happens. Uh, if you've had one of these or you used one of these, then um, please let me know.